So we also looked into, okay, if we know that propulsion is important and we know it's something that we're, we're sort of challenged to address in the clinic, how, how can we think about propulsion? How can that really be generated? Um, and we saw from Mike Lewick in episode eight, he, he did a really nice job of breaking down the two subcomponents of propulsion. So he specifically talked about the ankle plantar flexion or the forces generated at the ankle to really push down into the ground and push the ankle down and drive the body forward. And then he also talked about the importance of the trailing limb angle. Um, so this is the angle that your leg is basically behind your body's center of mass. So how far behind you is that leg when you're doing that ankle plantar flexion? So we put together a quick video just to sort of help everybody understand this a little bit deeper. And so what I'm gonna have all of our viewers do is if you can stand up where you are. Um, and what I want you to do is just put your hands on your hips. And the first thing we're gonna do is explore that ankle plantar flexion. So if you raise up onto your toes, and so you're plantar flexing your ankles, what I want you to do is feel the direction that your hips are moving. And you're gonna notice that your hips are just moving straight up because plantar flexion when your foot is underneath you is gonna move the weight of the body up but not move the weight of the body forward. So now we're gonna try this again and I'm gonna have you take a step forward with your left foot. And now I want you to raise up on the toes of your right foot. And now you're gonna feel that the, when you have your hands on your hips, your hips are actually translating forward as you raise up on your toes. So you can see that it's not just the ankle plantar flexors that matter, but it's also the angle that they are and the angle that your leg is with respect to your body. And we also heard from Lou in that same talk about why this really matters, why we care about propulsion asymmetry is that it really translates and correlates with all of these other metrics that we look at to really see how that affects that patient's you know, community ambulation and quality of life. And that's really what the goal of gait training is, is to get somebody back to their highest level of function and their highest quality of life that they can achieve. This has been a highlighted clip from Rewalk's Topics in Neuro Rehabilitation web series. To watch the full episode, please go to the Rewalk Robotics YouTube page or visit the link in the comments below. See you next time.